Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to part two of our CT evaluation of liver masses, key differential diagnosis pathways. And we left off last time beginning to talk about hemangiomas. Hemangiomas are one of the most common liver lesions we see, and in probably 90% of the time, we can be very specific as to its etiology. Hemangiomas have no malignant potential and essentially can always be left alone. Occasionally, hemangiomas can be very large, as large as 15 or 20 or even 25 centimeters, and then just because of mass, they may be resected, but that's a very, very unusual scenario. Now, in terms of hemangiomas, it's more common in women, it's more common in the right lobe of the liver, it's more common peripherally than centrally within the liver, and as I mentioned, the majority of lesions are classic. Now, what's a classic appearance for hemangioma? And this goes back to the beginning of C body CT. So it was said as follows. You had a low density lesion on non-contrast scans, typically one to five centimeters. When you gave IV contrast, the lesion would have peripheral enhancement around the edges. And then the lesion would fill in from peripheral to central over the next five to 10 minutes. Now, in the old days, what you required was the lesion not only to fill in peripheral to central, but become isodense. We know that a lot of hemangiomas have central scarring, and so they do not become isodense. We used to follow the lesions for 30 minutes. Could you imagine? Now, as far as I'm concerned, we never wait more than five minutes. Usually on the venous phase imaging by the peripheral enhancement, I can be very specific that it's a hemangioma or not. Now, it's important to remember that just because you have peripheral enhancement doesn't mean you're having a hemangioma. You can see peripheral enhancement in many things, including metastasis and hepatoma, but it's the type of enhancement you see. Now, in terms of describing hemangiomas, if a lesion reaches five centimeters, which is not uncommon, it's called a giant hemangioma. So in this first case, you see a lesion in the right lobe of the liver, and on arterial phase imaging, you see peripheral enhancement. You can see the peripheral enhancement is like a puddling. You also can see some central scarring in the lesion. You also notice that the liver is not cirrhotic. That's an important thing because one of the things we recognize, hemangiomas are basically blood pool collections. When you have cirrhosis, hemangiomas, if they were there, will collapse and they're not going to be visible. If you see a vascular lesion surely with peripheral enhancement in a patient with cirrhosis, it's to me hepatoma till proven otherwise. You're just not seeing hemangiomas in cirrhotic livers. Here's the imaging from above. And you can see very nicely on the coronal, both routine coronal and volume rendering, the peripheral puddling. And as you follow it in more, you can see the puddling is increasing. And the puddling goes from a peripheral to central pattern. When you do MIP imaging, since you're doing a projections through the lesion, you're seeing the front and back wall, and that puddling is particularly nicely seen. You'll often see feeding vessels. We talk about feeding vessels in FNH. We talk about feeding vessels in hepatoma. Hepatoma, the vessels are large and irregular. Uh, with uh, hepatic uh, FNH, we see the, the vessel going to the center of the lesion. With uh, hemangioma, it's typically puddling around the edges of the lesion. And as you can see, as you go further into venous phase, the puddling increases the peripheral to central filling in increases. Another case, same thing, peripheral enhancement. The MIP imaging is particularly good at showing you the puddling around the edge of the lesion. You can see the filling in of the lesion, classic hemangioma. And then in, as you would follow it out, uh, the lesion would fill in, though likely not in its entirety. As I mentioned, when I see this appearance, I know I'm dealing with hemangioma and I'm not waiting 15 or 30 minutes. Here it is again at about uh, three or four minutes out, the puddling very, very nicely shown. As I mentioned, you can see multiple hemangiomas in the liver. Some can be small, one to two centimeters. Others can be very large, like in this case, where you're looking at a 13 centimeter hemangioma. Again, the peripheral puddling, 
the filling in of the lesion. Nicely shown again on the routine coronal and on the coronal MIP imaging. As I mentioned, MIP is very valuable across the board in liver lesions, and hemangioma is really giving you the feel of that puddling because, again, you're projecting through the lesion, getting front and back wall, and that puddling, as image on the right shows, is very nicely shown. Now, I mentioned that most of the time, hemangioma is in the periphery of the lesion. I've seen a few times where hemangiomas are actually pedunculated lesions. We never think about hemangiomas as pedunculated lesions, or almost never till we make a mistake. Now, this patient was referred in for a mass, which was felt to be a gist tumor. There's the stomach, and there's the mass. Looks like a gist tumor. And you see it nicely on the coronal view again, and it looks like a gist tumor coming off the stomach. Again, when you have a pre-op study and it says gist tumor, look at extent, you're thinking gist tumor. But in this case, I was thinking to myself, you know, this lesion has a puddling enhancement pattern, which is not what I typically see with gist tumor. But to be honest, I read it as a gist tumor. If I looked more carefully, there's the left lobe of the liver, and this really is the left lobe, and it's a pedunculated lesion. Look how it fills in. I remember looking the lesion up on the path, expecting gist, and it said hemangioma. I thought it was a typo. No, it was a hemangioma. Now, in this case, the patient was experiencing pain, and the lesion would have been resected anyway, but it would have been nice if I told them it was a hemangioma and not a gist tumor. Another example here, which looks also somewhat like a possible gastric mass, again, on the arterial phase, the puddling around the edge of the lesion, the puddling increases as we go to venous phase imaging, and it's another example of a pedunculated hemangioma, nicely shown also on the cinematic rendering. But again, in the cinematic rendering, if I only showed you that image, I would just say a gist tumor. But again, you have to be careful. At times, hemangiomas will occur off stalks, abut the stomach, and can be confused with a gist tumor. So. We've had a few of these cases. I always wanted to publish them. We haven't, but it's something to think about. So it's a nice example of hemangioma simulating a gist tumor. Now, one of the things that always challenges me with hemangiomas, we talk about the puddling, and that's easy. But what if you see all these profusion changes around the lesion? And this case is a good example. And whenever I see perfusion changes in the liver around the lesion with vascular rim enhancement, I'm always worried, am I dealing with metastasis, think neuroendocrine tumor, or am I dealing with a hepatoma? Well, the patient doesn't have cirrhosis, so that makes me feel more comfortable. And this lesion, if you look at it as you follow it out, it does fill in, and the peripheral enhancement disappears. And this was a hemangioma. But I show this case because I just want to make the point that hemangiomas are not always the easiest things to diagnose. Here I felt better by the peripheral enhancement and the filling in of the lesion by venous phase. But again, you could see lesions filling in that are hypervascular metastasis. And I did worry about the perfusion changes around the liver. Now, I will admit, if it was a malignancy, those perfusion changes would also be seen on venous phase imaging, and the liver would not look so normal. But again, it's a challenge to make the point it's not always as easy as we would like it to be. And here's just an example of that same patient on the MIP imaging, show you the enhancement and the perfusion changes around the patient's liver. And here it is also on the patient's uh, cinematic rendering. So again, I do want to make the point that the majority of hemangiomas are classic. And yes, we can make the diagnosis in 90% of cases or more, but sometimes it can be a bit of a challenge. Okay, just some really nice cinematic renderings in this case. Now, another lesion that I really like is focal nodular hyperplasia. The reason FNH is so important is A, it was the first paper I ever wrote, but also FNH can simulate malignancy if you don't think about it. FNH is a benign lesion. There's no malignant potential. There's no chance of spontaneous bleeding. The majority are asymptomatic, which makes it kind of a challenge. So what do we look at? We talk about an incidental lesion. And you can see here, it's arterial phase imaging. There's a vascular lesion, right lobe of liver. 
you could say, could this be hemangioma? It doesn't quite look like that. It's not peripheral enhancement. Could this be metastasis? Could this be hepatoma? Those are definite possibilities, but the lesion becomes totally isodense on venous face imaging. Now, we have to admit hepatomas and vascular mets can become isodense, though usually not that quickly. But what lesion becomes very bright, it's a non serotic liver, well-defined borders, and becomes isodense, and that lesion is going to be FNH. Now, FNH is interesting. It's bright, but usually only as bright as the IVC. It's typically never as bright as the aorta, and a lot of hepatomas are essentially as bright as the aorta. So here's a nice lesion, right lobe of liver. It's as bright as the IVC, and if you look at the image on your right on venous phase imaging, it is basically isodense and no longer visible. Or this example, homogeneous. Remember, primary malignancies are typically not homogeneous. Some angiomas have peripheral puddling. I'll show you hepatic adenomas. They have not this type of homogeneous enhancement. This is really good for FNH. FNH often has a central scar, and we wrote the original articles talking about the central scar as did many other people. But we know that central scars can occur in many things from hemangiomas to FNH to hepatic adenomas to hepatoma to cholangiocarcinoma to metastasis. But the thing about the central scar, which is really fibrous tissue, is typically it will become isodense over time. You can see very nicely here the lesion, which was very vascular and large, so it's stretching the vessels. The vessel stretching is still seen, but the lesion is becoming nearly isodense. FNH is the second most common benign liver lesion after hemangioma. The male to female ratio of 1 to 8 and the characteristics of FNH regarding patient sex have been debated. Some authors have reported that FNH developing in men were smaller and more often atypical, though a recent study has shown no difference in the age of recurrence, size, and imaging features. So FNH is more common in women as is hepatic adenoma. FNH is often an incidental finding. Uh, in asymptomatic patients. But again, there can be a challenge against adenomas and carcinomas and hypervascular metastasis. So it's an important lesion because it's a benign leave-alone lesion. Most of the time we could reach the right diagnosis. If CT is uncertain, MR can be helpful. But again, it can be overlap with other tumors. As I mentioned, on non-contrast scans, it's isoattenuating or occasionally hyperattenuating. It's hypervascular and homogeneous on arterial phase imaging, often with a large central feeding vessel. And on venous phase, it begins to become isodense. There's no underlying cirrhosis present. Here's a lesion similar to one I showed you before. Right lobe, bright as the IVC, central scar, stretching of vessels. There probably is a second lesion present. We always typically think about FNH as solitary, but it can be multiple. Here's another lesion looking like the prior one. Central scar, homogeneous enhancement, as bright as the IVC, but not the aorta. There's the central vessel into the scar. You can see as we go through the lesion, there's the central vessel. MIP is nicely showing you that. And then the lesion quickly becomes nearly isodense, though you still can see the central scar. When you put all those images together, arterial to venous to delayed, you can see that it's not perfectly isodense, but nearly isodense. That central scar is nearly totally filled in. The brightness, homogeneity of the lesion, very similar to the patient's IVC, classic FNH. Another example here showing you the non-contrast where you don't see any lesion, but look how obvious it is, it is on the arterial phase. Now, I will say that METs occasionally can be isodense on non-contrast, hepatoma occasionally. So that's not a perfect help, but it can be helpful at times. Again, the central scar very nicely shown and that vessel going to the center of the lesion and how quickly it becomes isodense. I think one of the things that I find helpful, and if you look at CT as us in our teaching files, 
There's thousands of liver cases, lots of FNH, hepatic adenomas, hemangiomas, hepatomas, metastasis, you name it. It's a matter of looking at many cases so that you get the confidence to be very specific when you see one. And again, it's not perfectly isodense, but nearly isodense. And the lack of cirrhosis, again, makes it a little more comforting to you. So key differential diagnosis points, enhances to the level of the IVC, never to the aorta, feeding vessels to the center of the lesion, central scar, which is often vascular on arterial phase, but isodense on later phase imaging, and the lesion becomes isodense on venous. As I mentioned previously, FNH can be pedunculated lesions in about 9% of cases. That's what this article says. To be honest with you, uh, it's probably 1% of cases. Even if the connection with the liver is not clearly seen on imaging, CT and MR characterization of the lesions should allow you to make the diagnosis. And again, that makes the point about that lesion that I called a, uh, a um, gist tumor of the stomach. I should have realized, hey, this doesn't look like a gist tumor. This really looks like what I'm saying. It looks like a hemangioma, and I should have called it correctly, which I didn't do at that point. But hey, those things do indeed happen. Now, Here's a great example. Here's a lesion you can see here on venous phase and here on arterial phase. This was felt to be a hepatoma or something because it's a pedunculated lesion. It's not as bright or homogeneous as we typically think about FNH, but it has a feeding vessel. In fact, this was thought to be extra hepatic. I knew it was a hepatic mass because the hepatic artery is feeding it, but to be honest, I wasn't quite sure what we were dealing with. And it was one of those pedunculated FNHs. Here's another case, two lesions in the liver. What do you do with the right lobe? Is that lesion significant? It's homogeneous. There it is there. Okay. A good rule is not to call anything, even if it looked like FNH, or hemangioma, a benign lesion in a cirrhotic liver. You need to be very careful. Perhaps that's the time to get MR. You can see the feeding vessel going to the lesion. You can see it nicely on the cinematic images. And there it is again. And you can see the lesion becomes nearly isodense, but there's peripheral enhancement increasing around the lesion. When you speak about FNH, we talk about the lesion becoming isodense, not increasing density around the lesion. When I say increasing density, I'm always worried about some perfusion changes which makes me think about hepatoma. And this was a hepatoma. Washout from hepatoma is usually not isodense, and often you see the changes with increased peripheral enhancement around it. So that vascular lesion, and let me back up again. I want you to think about this. I'm purposely going backwards to show it to you. Vascular lesion on the axials and on the cinematic rendering, feeding vessel, Again, you could be thinking about FNH, but particularly as you reach the venous phase and you see the perfusion changes around the lesion, also the fact the patient has a cirrhotic liver, you can't be calling FNH. You can't be calling hemangioma. This was a hepatoma. So very, very important lesion, a very important differential diagnostic point that hopefully I can leave you with. Now, let's move on to hepatic adenomas. But what I'll do is I'll stop here. I know we've spent a lot of time speaking about different tumors, focusing on FNH, some of the challenges with FNH, some of the ease of use in making the right diagnosis. So let's take a break and come back with hepatic adenoma. See you in a few minutes. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.